this time we after two years we are back to DEF CON and this year we wanted to talk about something new actually also two years ago we were talking about something new but um, we will talk about asymmetric digital warfare what is it what is the point uh, today uh, what will happen in the future and we will take a very good example which is the Department of Defense uh, FCS program which stands for future combat system um, before starting I want to tell you that you will not get all the information you need out from this speech directly because the speech comes together with the release, release of the second episode of our comics if you go on zoneh.org website, uh, we already published one month ago uh, the first sample, actually, of hacker comics ever, uh, which was quite successful. And I suggest you to go there and download it. It's for free, of course. And the second episode, it is complementary to the speech we are going to have today. If you want to understand everything what we are going to talk and if you want to get even more deep e examples you definitely have to go either to download the, the comic from our website or we will distribute later to all of you um, a CD which is actually was signed originally also by us we, we are the authors of the comic and this is the PDF file containing the, the, the comic book there will not be any uh, questions and answers section. We don't have the time, but we will ask you a couple of questions. To those who are capable to answer, we will give a nice T-shirt with the cover of our um, comic book, which is that one. Anyway, my name is Roberto Preatoni. I am the founder of zonage.org, which is the last uh, mirror defacement mirror archive all of the others they closed it's a hell of a job to do it maybe one the next year in defcon i will try to explain to the people what is uh, a mirror archive the reason of existing of such thing and the efforts which are behind but not today first of all the credits i i have to give two credits uh, the first credit goes to the mit technology magazine i was in vacation uh, the last year I was reading a very good article on, on the MIT technology magazine and this article brought to my attention the problem that the American uh, army had during the second uh, Gulf War we will see what kind of problems and uh, the second credit I want to credit globalsecurity.org it, it is a very nice website you can get any kind of possible information about military system uh, you can spend years uh, downloading material and watching stuff. Of course, most of the things are traditionally military weapons, uh, but due to the fact that the FCS, Future Combat System, it is a known uh, program under development, you can find also references on globalsecurity.org. Another thing I want to say before uh, starting, it is all the material you will find here and on the slide which you have on your CD, I guess, it's public we didn't hack anything so you can get it by yourself if Johnny Lang is around he can teach you how to use Google in the proper way to download such material and to find it first of all there are several good reasons to download Zone H comic beside the fact that it is necessary to understand our speech uh, we have the dark tangent DEFCON's mastermind himself playing as a guest star in uh, in uh, in the comic and uh, the second reason you can see my ass basically <laughs> which I, I don't want to tell you it's even better than the first reason but up to you uh, actually I don't have it so flat it's a little bit more rounded <laughs> um, my friend uh, here is Fabio Ghioni and uh, he is one of the person, uh, uh, one of the best experts, in my opinion, uh, in uh, asymmetric warfare, anti-terrorism matter. If you read his uh, CV, is very long. Uh, you can get it actually from the 
DEFCON website. And uh, actually, it's your turn. You can start. We will talk a little bit me, a little bit him. Now it's a little bit me. So asymmetric warfare, I don't want to bore uh, anybody with uh, conventional things, but uh, some things must be said before. <coughs> and there are a lot of things which uh, are misunderstood. For example, the definition of asymmetric uh, warfare and the definition of unconventional. For unconventional, uh, so you understand the rest of the speech, of course. So for unconventional weapons uh, or unconventional means, uh, I give you an example. You have a fork. The fork you use it to eat, of course, a steak or whatever. Then an unconventional use of this fork is to stick it in the eye of this guy over here. So that's the thing. Then uh, there is another thing, an image, a very good uh, drawing that I saw on, uh, in a newspaper a few years back where there was a, a big marine soldier and a small, uh, I would say, Iraqi guy, you know, these drawers on newspapers. And those small Iraqi guys had, uh, you know, huge marine soldier with full of weapons everywhere and uh, millions of dollars of research. And the small Iraqi guy with uh, some sand in his hand, and he threw the sand in the eyes of the big soldier. And he said, ah, that's not fair. That's unconventional. So that's unconventional. And then asymmetric. For asymmetric, there was there is a thing very interesting when I was in Cuba about uh, a year ago to see um, Ramiro Valdez. Ramiro Valdez is one of the heroes of the revolution in Cuba. Hero in Cuba, not uh, everywhere else, of course. And uh, I remember that he said, uh, among other things, he said, ah, Americans, they invented the term asymmetric uh, because they want to invade us, and they said that we are preparing for asymmetric warfare. Actually, they are not because they don't have even lines, phone lines to get uh, connection uh, on the internet, but that's uh, one thing. And uh, what does that mean? That uh, a country, it means that a country that doesn't have the means to combat a war which is systemic, which is a huge expensive war, uses whatever it has, unconventional means. That is one of the meanings of asymmetric. The other thing is, for example, Islam and uh, a nation, like for example the USA or another nation. So if you have a France against Germany, it's symmetric. You have territory, you have people, you have uh, whatever, nation against another nation. If you have uh, Islam, Islam is scattered everywhere. You can have people working in your country, okay? You can uh, have uh, people everywhere. That's asymmetric. Religious matters and everything like that. So um, when it is used, uh, this is, uh, I just basically explained it, so that's, uh, uh, when uh, you are invading a country or you are combating a, a, an enemy which has uh, means which are too big to be compared to, like for example, the United States right now is the only country which can fight a systemic war, which is a war uh, where you have like bombs, intelligent bombs, you know, hit the third window on the left on the 20th floor and kill the man who is taking a pee in that moment, but don't kill the cat that is in the room. So that's that's intelligent bomb. Then if you kill the cat, you say, shit, didn't work, so we didn't spend that much money. And uh, uh, the, the country where this man is and he's taking a pee and the cat was killed, but he didn't have to be killed, etc., etc., uh, they don't have the money to fight this war, so they use whatever they have, okay? So it's called uh, asymmetric. It's also called dirty war. It's called in many ways. Okay. So, for example, did everybody see the Black Hawk Down movie? So whoever didn't see it, I mean, that's a, it's a very famous uh, or very important example of, um, of uh, asymmetry in a war, okay? And the use of unconventional means. So you have uh, this uh, big uh, uh, Sikorsky helicopter, which is uh, very expensive, and it costed a lot of money in uh, research and, dis and development. You have soldiers, you have uh, weapons, you have uh, maintenance. Uh, I mean, uh, you would never believe how much does it, co it cost to, to maintain an helicopter. After 100 hours of flight, it must be maintained for a lot of million dollars again. So you have all this thing, and then you had uh, a little boy with, uh, you know, a watch and uh, a cell phone. Actually, it was a, a satellite phone. And he saw the helicopters coming, he called uh, the guys on the base and he said, they're coming. And uh, the whole thing went, uh, you know, went like that. The Black Hawk went down and, uh, and uh, that battle was lost. 
So the big expense, the Delta Force and all the millions of dollars spent satellite uh, recognition and everything, all was spent for nothing because this little guy, which, uh, I mean, how much does it cost, this, uh, this little guy? You only have to feed him something. And uh, a satellite phone, so you have to pay the phone bill, and that's it. And he destroyed everything. This is, uh, you know, I mean, everybody nowadays does the example of the uh, Twin Towers. So you have the 19 men, 19 cutters, and then you have the 11 September thing, okay? All the intelligence expenses that have been done from, from in the years before didn't prevent this episode like many other episodes. Of course, there are a lot of uh, things that have been prevented, but we will never know what they are. So, why are we saying this? Because in these uh, in this years, uh, the electronic uh, uh, warfare, the electronic mean, is the best way to hit uh, the countries which are uh, technologically developed. Okay, so we have, uh, for example, all the Western Bloc countries. These countries uh, depend almost totally on uh, digital systems, on uh, telematic system, on uh, uh, electronic systems. So the critical infrastructures, telecommunication infrastructures, uh, uh, food supply, banking system, uh, military systems, even, for example, in the United States, the uh, missiles, uh, I think they have IP addresses. So everything depends on uh, electronic and telematic systems. So what do you need to do to hit such a country? You might use electronic means if you know where to hit, of course, so you need to do some research before, some intelligence. But uh, I, both the intelligence and the fighting, you do it uh, using uh, a computer like this one. You connect to the network and uh, if you are good to search or to find things and you are good also on, uh, on exploiting them, then you might uh, hit a critical infrastructure and create a blackout. Uh, you know that in the past years there have been several blackouts around uh, the Western countries. For example, in Italy, where I come from, there was a huge blackout about two years ago where all the country went black, totally. Uh, the government said that it was uh, a tree, some tree that fell over some type of wire. It was totally impossible explanation. So who will ever know what happened? Nobody. And the same thing happened also in the United States uh, uh, three years ago, I think, or a couple of years ago too, and in other countries. So they said it was Switzerland, you know, in Italy they said it was Switzerland, the tree fell over some kind of wire, and then everything went blacked out. The whole country, it was incredible. I was there. Uh, at night, I was out, it happened at night actually, I never saw this type of darkness, it was totally scary. So, you can uh, hit uh, these critical infrastructures and uh, the thing is that you can create more damage uh, doing this uh, than uh, doing a lot of other things. So, uh, for example, the bombings that were in London uh, last week, okay, or two weeks ago, or what did they do? They killed people, okay, 50 people died. But uh, uh, after these 50 people died, uh, the country, what did, uh, did it suffer? Okay, there was a human life, okay? And that's, uh, nobody can contest the fact that uh, it is valuable, but uh, nothing changed, okay? The structures were totally there. It was psychological, it was uh, mediatic, it was uh, uh, public opinion, it was all these kind of things. So that's what terrorists want to hit at that moment. But if they really wanted to create damage, they didn't have to kill those 50 people. They could just uh, stop a nuclear uh, power reactor or uh, uh, damage it somehow. You don't need to do very sophisticated things to exploit uh, critical infrastructures. You just need to do a little thing that uh, just creates havoc. Okay? So this is the thing. Then I will go on later and I give the microphone back to this guy. Uh, it might sound strange, but the main difference between the first and the second Gulf War was a bandwidth difference. Uh, in the next 10 years, U.S. has developed uh, the way to uh, distribute information, to collect information. And uh, basically, in the second Gulf War, the U.S. troops, they were enjoying 42 times more bandwidth than in the, in the first Gulf War. How this bandwidth was actually used? Well, the picture on the center, it's a uh, typical... Uh, uh, command center, command and control center, which uh, collects uh, a lot of data, which could be uh, data and voice interception or data coming from spies deployed on the territory. They are going to be uh, fed actually into the system. From uh, 
stealth planes, uh, which are actually flying over the territory and watching the situation, taking pictures, spy drones, unmanned vehicles uh, from satellite uh, and uh, also from the Blue Force Tracker, which is a very important uh, system for uh, the American Army. It is the system, if you see in the movie when they are, I don't know, on the enemy territory and they open the laptop uh, and the laptop will be showing some red triangles on a map, which is, this is the enemy, and some blue triangles, uh, this is us. Uh, actually, this system is not science, science fiction. It is existing and they're already using it uh, uh, successfully. Well, I want to tell you one thing. If you open Google Maps, or if you ever use the downloading the trial version, not cracked, of course, of uh, Keyhole, uh, the software which was used by CNN uh, to show you basically the toilet in which the guy was pissing, uh, and beside it was the cat from the, from, from the satellite. Do you have any idea how many megabytes, geeks, uh, it's actually taking a picture uh, uh, taken from, from a satellite. Huge amount. Now, if you have a satellite which is taking picture on the territory, on, on the enemy territory, and you have to download to give this picture to the troops, uh, then you need bandwidth. You can't do the 800 times 600 JPEG picture. This is good for browsing Britney Spears website, but not to, to go at war. This is the reason why US Army developed uh, such a large bandwidth network. Was it working? No. When US troops entered into the territory, they started to uh, experience a lot of troubles. Now, focus your attention. Do you remember exactly the day when they started to invade Iraq? The guy was sitting, the CNN guy was sitting uh, on the top of a US tank which was running 120 kilometers per, per hour. I don't know it in miles, you can do calculation by yourself. And it was 75, and it was running and running and running, and the, the journalist was saying, eh, there is nobody, nobody is facing us, uh, that we, we don't see the enemy. And that was, was the problem, because uh, uh, they were running too fast, and they were losing connectivity try to hook yourself into a Wi-Fi network while you are on your car and you're driving fast. You can't. And uh, basically the Humvees which were in front of the US troops, uh, they had to stop even for 12 hours to download the ta tactical data. Now, do you know the difference between strategical and tactical data? Tactical data are the data which are necessary to survive in the next five minutes because it's telling you where the enemy is, from which point you should uh, expect to be attacked, where should you go not to be attacked, what you should do, and because the command and control center is, tell is telling you to do this, this, and that. And if you rely on connectivity for having such service, it's good as long as you have connectivity. But if you don't have any more connectivity, what is happening? You don't know where your enemy is, while your enemy know very well where you are because you are stopped in the middle of the desert. <laughs> and uh, how was organized the system for the second uh, Gulf War? Basically, we had uh, uh, two command and control center. One was located in Qatar. The second was located in Kuwait. And uh, all the data um, gathered by the probes uh, was actually fed into a system which was producing too much of intelligence. Uh, Try to, it is like if you enable all of, of your IDS messaging, or if you are using Zone Alarm and you tell, it, you tell to Zone Alarm to pop up the window each time you are receiving a, uh, a strange packet. No, it will pop up every five seconds. And what it will be the end, that you will switch off the pop-up thing. Too much of information equal no information. And this was a problem. The second problem was that the information was fed into a satellite system. The satellite system was downloading, sending, sorry, uh, through a traditional microwave stream, so, sorry, traditional radio streaming to a vehicle which was located back of the US troops. And from the vehicle, which was actually supposed to act as a router to distribute the information, uh, the data were sent uh, using uh, I 
off-site um, microwave beam, I guess for security reason, they didn't want to uh, have the high technology enemy, which is the Iraqi troops, uh, uh, intercepting the, the data of the US troops. Uh, but this system is working as long as you can see the vehicle which is on your back. But if you're running uh, 75 miles per hour because you don't face the enemy, then you're losing this, uh, this link and you're not capable to get any data. This was the reason why they had to stop and wait 12 hours to get the data. And they were killed, actually. Sorry. US soldiers lost life also due to this, because they didn't have the backup of the intelligence telling them where the enemy is. They were facing the enemy in the same moment they realized it was existing. And at, at the same time, the bullets, they were uh, flying over their head. Now, the Blue Force tracking system, it's the system who tells you where the enemy is. Luckily, luckily, when they developed it, they assigned a, search, a certain amount of bandwidth to the BFT, which is uh, actually working uh, using the satellites. It doesn't work using uh, direct microwave beams. It means you can always receive it, actually the same system you're using on your car for your G GPS system. Very similar, very similar. Luckily, the amount of bandwidth developed uh, from the very beginning to supply information through the uh, Blue Force tracking system was more than it was actually needed. So the developers, having such extra bandwidth, they were thinking, what, what we are going to do? Are we going to use this bandwidth or not? Yes, what do we do? Mm, let's build an email system. You never know, it might come in handy. And actually came in handy because the whole Iraqi invasion, having the, f the, the first system not working, was actually organized through emails. USA was at war in the sense that through the email coming from the Blue Force tracking system, they were capable to finally coordinate their own action. This was the past. Now, a question for you. Um, to the one who is going to answer to me, I'm going to give a, a T-shirt. What is this? Can you tell me what is this? Excuse me? What is it? A trigger. No, 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 not a landmine. No, 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 no. No? No, diesel pump? No, 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 no. You have it in your kitchen. I, you have diesel pumps in your kitchen. What are you doing? <laughs> you, what, what? Microwave? Magnetron. Ah. Please, it's a magnetron. And you have it in your uh, uh, microwave oven. And it's a system that can be used, actually, to disrupt uh, direct uh, microwave beams uh, as it was uh, used uh, in the uh, Iraq invasion. We will see later some other uh, example how to use such, th such thing. Anyway, this was the past. And US Army actually didn't want to experience any more such problem. No bandwidth, no connectivity, no tactical data equal death. So they decided to develop a new system which is called FCS, which stands for Future Combat System. And it is a $21 billion program, but it is going to be upgraded already. It's in the, in exactly in the middle of its own development. It's not science, fi science fiction. Some prototypes have been already developed. And this is the system which is meant to uh, totally um, substitute the way the US is doing the war in the future. In which way? We will come to the hacking part later, don't worry. The old war concept was that you should have heavy war equipment, the big Abram tank, with having massive firepower. I want to shoot once and I want to kill them all. Uh, large battlefronts, full division deployed on the territory. Let's occupy, hit, destroy. Having low-tech infantry, because high-tech infantry cost a lot. And of course, having 
vehicles which were uh, driven by, by real people. Now, under the FCS program, things are going to be changed. Not anymore heavy war equipment, but light war equipment. Instead of the big Abram tank, they are going to develop small, lighter tank. More uh, faster than, uh, than, uh, than the Abram one. Having not a massive firepower, but having a minimal firepower. But they are so fast that they can shoot you and then move and shoot you again and then move and shoot again and again and again, like if you are surrounded by uh, a lot of bees. Basically, you don't know. You are, you are going to, 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 to get hit from a lot of different uh, uh, directions. Instead of a large division of, uh, of soldiers deployed on the territory, they are going to deploy small families called families of soldiers, typically in 12 uh, 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 12 people unit. So I put 12 people here, 12 people there, 12 people there. If you know where they are, they are very much vulnerable. You can kill them very easily. But there is a trick. We have a large use of intelligence. What does it mean? It means that I, am, I must be capable to supply through the FCS system information, immediate information to the people, uh, to the troops deployed on the battlefield so that even if they are small families of soldiers, they will be constantly uh, 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 aware about what is going on. And the trick is that uh, when the enemy think uh, that uh, they identified uh, our troops, uh, we are already capable to understand it. We moved the troops somewhere else and we hit the enemy. And then we are going to move them and again and again and again. And finally, having a large use of automatic vehicles. We have some example here, public data from uh, globalsecurity.org. Some of them, especially the one in the box, uh, you already saw the, the, the drones, the spy drones, uh, they're already uh, in force. Uh, some other are prototypes. So you can see also the size of the vehicle compared to the, to the human being. They are much smaller than what we were used to see a long time ago. And these are the working prototypes uh, of combat drones. In our comic, uh, our heroes, they have to uh, uh, actually get rid of one of these uh, combat drones, which gets hijacked by an uh, enemy's hacker, and it's used against uh, its own troops. Now, <coughs> always from public data, we can see that uh, this is the uh, timing, uh, the, the Gantt diagram, basically, on how the FCS is meant to be deployed uh, in, the, in the following years. Uh, when they developed this in 2001. And one thing you can note, uh, it is that uh, it's saying uh, that the problem, actual problem, is that uh, there is a lack of artificial intelligence. So they are drones, uh, but they have limited capability of understanding the surroundings, which means they can drive around by themselves, but in combat situation, if you have the risk uh, to kill one of your own soldiers, better not to take such risk, such vehicles will be taken over by a U.S. Army uh, soldier and they will be remotely controlled by, by him, which will actually tell to the drone where to shoot and how to shoot. Now, the question is, from the hacker point of view, to receive the, the signal, the control signal, it must be hooked to a network, and there is a network, we'll, we will see later. If there is a network, it means such, such thing is permanently connected and authenticated to the network. Good. But it can get, for example, can get stuck into a hole or uh, the, the, the wheels can blow up and the, thing, the whole thing will be stopped in the middle of somewhere. So what if the enemy is going to put its own hands over it? It is dangerous to have a thing which is permanently connected to your network because the enemy can ha put the hands over the network. So I guess I didn't find any reference, but I, I expect there are such some, there might be some uh, system to protect uh, in such situation, like self-destroying system. Self-destroying, it doesn't mean it's going to be blown up because it might be dangerous, because it might be close to your own soldiers. Self-destroying means uh, that you will destroy the digital contents of the drones, uh, leaving just basically a piece of hardware. You remember this, the American spy plane which was landing on the Chinese island a few years ago. 
The American soldiers, uh, before landing on the Chinese island, it was a spy plane. Basically, it was connected to the US Army network. They destroyed, not physically, but logically, all the content in the airplane. The Chinese authorities, they were capable to put their hands over a piece of hardware without the software. And you know better than me that if you have the hardware without the software, it's basically a little bit more than nothing. Now, then, if it, if it has really such an uh, auto-destruction system, uh, the smart hacker employed by the, by the enemy might think ways to trigger the system of the self-destruction. Not doing it today, but doing it the day you need it and this thing it is deployed on the battlefield. You are relying on the, uh, its usage, but the hacker will actually uh, destroy the content, triggering the self-destruction uh, mechanism. How this thing works? The FCS uh, system, it is uh, managed by a huge network, the largest network after internet, actually, uh, if I think, which is called Mosaic. Mosaic network, it is meant to manage the whole war infrastructure of, of infrastructures of US Army. Uh, ships, uh, submarines, uh, airplanes, uh, infantry, drones, everything will be connected somehow to this network. The network, the Mosaic network, it is meant to have a kind of quality of service uh, uh, feature based of, on uh, the importance of the packet. If the packet is coming from the command and control se center, this packet has priority in the meshed network because it is a meshed network. It means uh, if, uh, even if the network is uh, congestioned, blocked somehow, overloaded, the packets coming from the high priority centers will be uh, routed correctly to the end, having the other packets waiting for that. And in our comic, we cannot say it here, but we can say it on the comic, because the comic is science fiction, we actually imagine uh, the way to exploit uh, such a system just uh, flooding it by uh, high priority uh, packets, by replicating them and saturating, saturating the network. Now, the FCS system, it is a system, a daring system. Uh, they already tried uh, some of, of the pieces, some of the equipment, uh, and the network, it is TCP IP based, and it's basically using uh, uh, traditional uh, uh, network equipment, and several of the drones uh, are actually Linux based. A militarized version of Linux, of course, uh, with uh, harder uh, uh, stacks, uh, maybe less holes, you never know. Uh, but it's still something which is public uh, and based on public networking system. And uh, now comes the problem. What I call uh, the Apollo 13 uh, effect. Do you actually know what was the real reason why the Apollo 13 uh, had the problem? You remember that the oxygen tank exploded. If you know the reason, you can get a second t-shirt. Which was the real reason why the oxygen tank of the Apollo 13 exploded? Not communication problems. Wiring? Almost. Excuse me? A short in the oxygen center, but why? Electrical, yes, almost. We are close. No, 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 no. Well, if n nobody is... You? No. No. Voltage. Voltage. The Apollo 13 uh, project was a huge project. Uh, a lot of suppliers, uh, Rockwell, uh, Boeing, uh, and so on, they were helping NASA to develop the systems. From Apollo 12 to Apollo 13, uh, the difference it is that they decided to increase the voltage which was used to run 
the, the, the systems of, uh, in, in the Apollo 14. Yeah. So all the developers, all the subcontractors, they were informed, of course, except one, Rockwell. <laughs> and uh, which is, by the way, one of the subcontractors of, of the SCS system. But anyway, not being informed about this such increase in the voltage, their own, uh, they were supplying the oxygen tank and it blown up because it was overloaded by voltage. You can get the t-shirt anyway. <laughs> now, why it happened? It's actually normal. In my experience, uh, uh, when I work uh, beside Zone H, I do penetration tests uh, with my own company. And one of, the, like, one of the thing I notice it is when you have complex systems uh, made up, for example, by different uh, subcontractors, uh, the implementation of the such system, it is introducing more vulnerabilities. Rockwell was one of uh, a new vulnerability for the Apollo 13 uh, program. Now I expect, uh, given the fact that we have FCS uh, being uh, a consortium much bigger than the Apollo 13 one of company, most Amer mostly American companies, <coughs> Uh, the leader of the consortium is Boeing. You can see actually advertising on CNN in these days, uh, not specifically related to the FCS system, but the images they are showing are belonging to the FCS system. So the general public start to be aware about such system. Uh, the Apollo 13, uh, sorry, the, the FCS system, it is led by Boeing, having also a large consortium of company uh, to be actually managed as a project manager. We can say actually Boeing is the, pr the, the FCS project manager on behalf of the, the Department of Defense. Now, how does it work? The US Congress tell to US Army, yes, you have to develop a new system, they assign a budget, uh, and then they, they name a project leader, Boeing. Then the system are div divided in subsystems uh, and in consortium. There is the consortium of companies which are developing robotics, artificial intelligence. Then there is a consortium of companies which is developing unmanned vehicles, uh, another consortium of companies which is developing weaponry, and so on. Each company has to report to Boeing how things are going on. And, uh, of course, each consortium itself has a consortium leader. The consortium leader has to act as a sub-project manager to the rest of the companies b uh, belonging to the same consortium. Each consortium and each company in the consortium has its own project manager, internal company project manager, who has to lead the activity of the programmers, for example, uh, which are developing within the company a particular piece of the SCS system. Now, you can imagine, if you add uh, all the programmers, uh, each programmer developing the system, uh, by the way, FCS system, it is 31 millions of code, the software, 31 millions of lines of code. You can imagine how many conceptual and practical vulnerabilities they might be introduced by people who never developed, for example, such software, because nobody did it before. It, it, it is a totally new uh, thing. And when a lot of programmers belonging to a company which is put uh, together with a lot of other different companies uh, which are belonging to a, to a consortium, which, is, which are put together with several other consortium, are going finally to integrate uh, what they produced, uh, the software, you can imagine the huge amount of shit that can come out. Now, as a personal experience and also an analyzing the data coming from Zone H, we have one million of uh, cyber crimes, uh, defa web defacement, okay, they call it, let's call it web defacement, filed in our archives. For each, we know how it happened and uh, uh, the reason of uh, the attacks. Uh, we can say today, most of the hacks which we see every day, two and a half thousand server hacked per day, this is the amount of data we're receiving as donation.org, 80% uh, of the time, the system is hacked through the application layer. And FCS system is mostly application. Now, I, do, I, I want to say they are better than the average. OK, it will, it will be vulnerable, maybe uh, at 40% on the application level. But still, there are uh, possible vulnerabilities to be introduced by the system integration, for example. 
the protocol might be bugged, transmission protocol might be bugged, the uh, hardware integration might introduce vulnerabilities, and also, of course, uh, information leakage. Hackers are actively looking to get information about PFCS. I met, personally, a guy uh, in Rome uh, which was representing US Navy, and he was investigating on leaks. Uh, he didn't uh, name to me the FCS system itself. He told me, uh, we are looking for information uh, about uh, um, hackers uh, coming from the East Europe, uh, stealing a piece of information about uh, military uh, software or military programs under development. Well, the only military program under development so far, big, is the FCS system. And uh, um, no need to name it, actually. It was clear to me that they, were, they are having such problem. Already there are spies who are actually using uh, uh, hacker uh, means to get information about this new system. Now, if uh, there are software problems uh, that might be software problems, uh, again, read the comic and you will get a very good hint on how to hack uh, the Mosaic network. Uh, there are also other problems. First of all, we, the FCS system it is organized uh, following the lobbying standard procedure uh, in the American way. So. Uh, the president got a lot of money for his uh, campaign from Boeing, therefore Boeing, for example, I'm just uh, doing some science fiction. Boeing is named as a project leader, but then also other people, they were sust sustaining the campaign, then they, they, they also have to have a little piece. So it is not always distributed as it should be, uh, uh, the work. Uh, uh, lobbyism has a big part in the decision to which company assign a project or not. Then the military software is not open sourced, of course. You know L Linux is the most audited code ever. Still, we are finding vulnerabilities. Still. Uh, Firefox. Everybody using Firefox because it was open sourced two years ago. Well, you never re I, don't, I don't know anybody who was actually reading the, the source. But they were saying, oh, it's open source, so I can use it. It's, it's safe. But still are coming out new vulnerabilities. Because it's open sourced, a closed source platform, basically it is a never audited platform. Because who is going to audit the FCS system? The same people who are developing it. And you know better than me that you can't audit your own job. The job should be outsourced by somebody else, but because it's uh, military, you can't do it. Therefore, I expect, by my experience, to find a, a lot of vulnerability in the application level and within the lines. Uh, then, if the S FCS system is leading your troops on the battlefield, losing somehow connectivity or being hacked, uh, leads to a lot of trouble because you don't have anymore a large battlefront which is capable to defend itself. Now you have small families of soldiers, 12 soldiers, dispersed in the territory. They don't get shit from the satellite or information. They don't know where they are. They don't know where the enemy is. They don't get the command uh, from the command and control center. They don't know what to do. They are blind, basically. They are slow because they are uh, uh, without uh, heavy equipment. And they are a very vulnerable target. Now, if I am an enemy of the uh, United States today, definitely I would start a program for collecting information, as much information, information as I can about such FCS system because nobody can uh, fight uh, against the United States uh, using the same uh, uh, system because you need a lot of money. There is no symmetric uh, power as an enemy for the United States. The only way you can fight the United States if United States it's adopting such system, it is to use asymmetric ways. And one of the ways it is to hack the servers of the companies which today are going to develop uh, such uh, uh, system and to try to steal information. And what one of the things which we did, we were imagining uh, to be, uh, I don't know, hackers uh, 
coming from uh, North Korea or hackers coming from uh, Iran and to see how much of information we could find on the internet to hack the system. It's not done. So, this is a question I, I put there, just uh, a, a little forward to the question. The most vulnerable system, as everybody knows, is uh, uh, our brain, right? So it's the human being. The human being with all its vulnerabilities and its ways to be bought or exploited. So that's why I put uh, this question there. Who, is, uh, who are the best security aware managers or people in the world history? The pharaohs. They got uh, a lot of people to build the pyramids, and then at the end they killed them all. I didn't find any slide with the people being killed afterwards, so I didn't put it, but um, that's the thing. So, we cannot do it now. So, uh, the right way would be we, make, we build a future combat system, and then we kill everybody that build it. Then we wouldn't have anybody to maintain it, but that's not a problem. It's illegal, but uh, what the hell? So... This is just uh, to explode uh, what uh, I was saying before. Uh, this slide, I, took it, um, I borrowed it from uh, a Swedish uh, study from a university there. That's actually pretty, uh, I liked it very much because it explains um, all the phases of the conflict. You have uh, uh, the mechanical war at the center, which is you know big armies facing each other with the guns and going forward and shooting and everybody falls down. At the end, only one soldier remains and that army won. And uh, there was the old way to, to fight. Uh, then you have uh, the dirty war, which is terrorism or resistance war. Depends from the viewpoint. You know, if you win, it's resistance. If you lose, it's uh, terrorism. And uh, then you, ha you have uh, a peace war, which is uh, you know the war that was fought between the Eastern Bloc and the Western Bloc when there was the, the Soviet Union. And the systemic war, which is the only war, uh, the war that can be fought only by the United States right now, which has the money. It's the big difference between. Uh, all the other types of war and systemic war is uh, money, and uh, the other wars are people, more people, more money. Uh, and, uh, you know, little windows that you can hit with the uh, intelligent bombs. And then you have the ICT war. ICT war is a type of dirty war which can be fought only by, uh, by subjects which have the capability or which are linked, which have a high technological uh, situation in their countries and can be fought only against another country which has the same situation. For example, you cannot fight an ICT war against Iran because they have only two servers, I think. I mean, the last time I checked was, was a couple of uh, mail servers in the mines and uh, whatever ministry, uh, etc. They don't have anything on the nuclear side, so that's unfortunate for the intelligence people here. And, uh, but you can fight an ICT war between, I don't know, I'm just doing fiction, Japan and uh, whatever, Korea. They are not at war, but if they would, they would be the thing. So, um, if you want to, this is uh, taken from a book which is called Unrestricted Warfare. I think everybody in the, that has uh, some interest in this has read it. It was first translated by the CIA and then it was retranslated again because there were some points which were not uh, totally clear. And uh, they were the first that uh, unrestricted because uh, they, they uh, in, Hypothesized uh, means uh, any kind of means to fight uh, a, a war. There, is, there are no rules in fighting a war, which means that you can do just about anything. The important thing is the result, to win. Okay? And uh, they were the first to say that uh, one of the best means to fight a war would be to, through uh, electronic means, exploiting the electronics and the telematics. So, future combat system. This is all uh, uh, the material you will see from here on uh, up to the last slide, which is uh, 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 done by some, I think, Accenture. Uh, they are all uh, being taken from open source. Nothing has been hacked, right? No, no, no. no, ah. no hacked. Okay. <laughs> so this is uh, the distribution of the consortiums uh, that work on the future combat system. So if you want to do research from an intelligence point of view, you start from here. You see who is working for whom and on what. And then you get, wow, you get uh, all the companies that work on what project and where they are located. 
uh, one, two, three, four pages. Wow. And then you get, wow, what's that? You get uh, all the, um, what is this? Oh. So this is uh, the, ah, okay, this is uh, the specific project uh, that, uh, that has been uh, uh, assigned, the description of the project, the company, and other uh, little informations about that. And then you have one, two, and here, here you go. So this is all you need, actually, to do what you need to do if you want to start uh, fighting this future combat system. You have uh, the companies, you have the projects, you have the, 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 the project managers, the people, the ICs, their email address, the email servers, and their phone number. So what else do you want? We have uh, two pages of that as an example because we didn't want to make the presentation too long. So, uh, do you, you know, of course, that if you have uh, already an email address of a person, you can do a lot of things from remote, because you can use uh, modern uh, Trojan horses technologies or uh, things like that. And uh, I assure you that in the industrial espionage business, which is a business right now, this type of uh, uh, methods and exploiting is being used constantly. And it is very well paid, very well paid. Uh, on the other hand, if you don't have the technical capability, you can just send a person with a, with a bag full of money and uh, you just find out how much one of these people costs. Maybe he's not happy, you know, how people are bought in companies. You know, maybe you didn't get your promotion, maybe your boss was too harsh on you, maybe, uh, I don't know, your wife left you and then you are not happy. And then this person comes near to you at the bar and says, ah, you should be, I mean, you are better than that. Uh, I think you should do, you know, something for a better cause. Uh, here is $10,000. Ah, $10,000 is not too much. Is it $20,000? Then the end, somebody says, okay, let's do it. So another thing which you can see here is a system like the future combat system. Uh, what can exploit it? We said before, uh, I mean, you just need to jam it. You don't need to hack it, actually, because hackers uh, are uh, perfect. You know, they want to do things. Uh, uh, it's the act of hacking, which must be. It's not uh, always the result. You know, you want to do that thing, and then you say, okay, it's easy to do it. I say, ah, it is, the easy thing is, is for, uh, is for uh, you know, no good shit, you say in America. So I want to do it uh, the, in a very artistic way. Maybe you take six months, but then you never get the result because it's too old by the time you get the result. So you just sometimes need to jam something, the communication, for example. In this case, you have uh, an EMP shock generator, which is an electromagnetic pulse shock generator. It's a bomb, basically. You can rent it uh, for research and discovery or research and development purposes if you can prove you are a researcher. And a lot of people can prove it for $1,500 a month. And then you, can b you, can, you have the option to buy it for $11,000 afterwards. So this is uh, public. I mean, you can, if you want to buy it, I, I thought about it, actually. And uh, uh, you put it in the middle of, uh, of a square somewhere, and then uh, you activate it. You run very fast because you need to get about three miles far. And then uh, and everything in three miles, you know, it just burns out, every circuit. And uh, all the people that are around the bomb, uh, you know, they also get uh, suntanned a little bit. So. This I put because, uh, uh, you know, in the company where I work for, uh, there are a lot of consultants which are being paid a lot of money to do things like that. You know, this is the security management learning model. And it's supposed to tell you how to do security in a company or whatever. And uh, uh, from uh, my experience, uh, all uh, the things that uh, we just said and all the things that we, that we saw in the past, I can tell you that this is just, you know, if you work for a company, just don't pay people to do things like that. They're very good if you want to make a big picture or we say in Italy, if you want to wrap fish, you know, you go and buy fish and you need paper to wrap it, you know, that's, that's the thing. So sorry if there is any big consultant in here. And if you have any questions, we don't have enough time. So just write us an email. <laughs> okay? Uh, you, can, you can come here. We have the CD with the, with the comic. You can get it. And by the way, it was supposed to, to be signed by the Dark Tangent, but you know the little Cisco problem uh, he had uh, in, the, in the Black Hat uh, was keeping his, him busy. So basically, he will sign it uh, just uh, if, you, if you show up yourself with a CD, he will sign it. We'll be happy to sign it. CDs are there. 
and we have a few keystrokes uh, here.